guys. Welcome back to Concertini.com. My name is Michael Fried. I'm a violinist and today I'm going to teach you just how to hold the violin properly so that when you begin learning how to play, you are set up in the easiest way possible. So there's three things we just want to be sure of before we begin learning and practicing how to hold our violin. One is that we just have the right size of violin. Now this is a full size violin because I am an adult player. If you are maybe around younger than the age of 10, you might want to look for a three-quarter size violin, and any younger than that, a professional uh, specialty violin shop will set you up with the right size. It goes down to a quarter size generally, but there are violins even smaller than that for little baby musicians. But let's just assume that we have a full-size violin. Now with our violin, we want to make sure that we have a modern chin rest, which will come with the violin generally. Um, as long as you go to a specialty shop. And then the other comfort device that we have for the violin is the shoulder rest right here. Now the shoulder rest has two sides usually. One is slightly larger than the other side and also will have concave shape as opposed to the convex shape of the other side. Now this larger side is gonna go right underneath our chin rest. So I just hold the smaller end, hook the top onto the rib, and slide on the bottom. Now, if you watched our previous video about the violin, you'll know that this is called a shoulder rest, but it doesn't quite rest on our shoulder joint, actually. We wanna look for a place that's a little bit closer to our collarbone. So for my students, what I have them practice is first be completely aware of the left side of the body. The left side is always where we hold the violin. There is I can confidently say no violinists actually play on the right side. It's very, very rare that you would ever see a left-handed uh, style of playing. Um, and this is simply because of orchestra, standardized orchestra. All the violinists will sit the same way. Otherwise, their bows would be clashing. And also, you'd have to find a left-handed teacher to teach you the other way, which would be extraordinarily difficult to, to accomplish. So we'll just be aware that we are playing on the left side of our body. So if we can just hold up our left hand and maybe raise up our left shoulder, swing around our left elbow, just be aware of all the lines in the body, how they connect every joint in the body, which extends even to our fingertips. Our normal fingers will have three joints in them and our thumb will just have two. We have one joint right here and our second joint that connects to our palm, but all of the other fingers will have three joints. So the very bottom um, of your first finger, let's call it the first joint, right here, you might wanna make a mark with some sort of utensil just right there on the first joint. And then with our thumb, not the first joint, but the second joint, the middle joint right here, which when we close, they should meet up. So this, line right here of my thumb should meet up with the bottom of my forefinger. This is where the neck of our violin is going to end up resting. So we don't actually want to grip the violin all the way in the crevice of the thumb and the first finger. We do want a little bit of support from our thumb underneath, so that's why it's the middle joint of the thumb that's gonna make contact with the violin. All of our fingers are free to stand very nice and tall on the fingerboard with our thumb supporting below. If our thumb is actually up here, which is the incorrect way, some teachers may teach this way, but um, I was always taught not to have it all the way down here. If our thumb is up like this, it can make it very difficult to reach our third finger and our fourth finger in tune just because of the way the hand is collapsed. If we have support underneath here, we can actually reach a lot farther on the violin. So we're just going to hold our violin with our two little markings right here at the very base of the neck. Notice I have some space behind my thumb. We're gonna hold the violin in what I call Statue of Liberty position with the front of the violin facing out. And ideally, we would want to do this standing up. I'm sitting down just because I'm in my living room studio here. Um, but we're gonna hold up our violin and make sure that we're making contact with those two base joints. Not quite the base of our thumb once again, but actually the very middle of our thumb. And then feel free to wrap your fingers around the strings like this. 
We're gonna hold up the violin and count to five. Okay, then go back down to resting position where the violin rests underneath the right arm. Bridge facing out. Then we're just gonna practice that one more time up to Statue of Liberty position. Okay, then we're gonna flip the upside, the violin upside down while it's still in the air and have that shoulder rest come right down to our collarbone. So it doesn't matter so much that you place it precisely, just get that feeling of hitting the collarbone with the shoulder rest. So one more time back up to Statue of Liberty position. We flip the violin upside down and then shoulder rest first. We're going to land on the collarbone and while our shoulder rest is still resting on the collarbone, we're gonna lift our jaw up and sit it into the dip of the chin rest. So be very certain that you're not using your chin to hold onto the violin, but rather the side of the jaw. If you need to turn your head very slightly to adjust, that's totally okay. Just try not to have the physical chin bone on the chin rest. We want to actually fit it more so under the jaw, which lines up with our collarbone. Otherwise, we end up kind of contorted like this, and that can cause pain for the neck. So we go Statue of Liberty position, upside down, shoulder rest to collarbone, and jaw on the chin rest. Now, if you've done all these steps correctly, you should have the freedom to take the left hand down without any sort of adjustment from the violin. Now, for the very first time that you practice this, it will be sort of awkward. The violin might want to crawl away from you like this. Be sure that there is no space left in between the violin and the neck, just like so. Drop the left hand. Be very sure that your violin is secure because we don't want any dropping of our instrument. We're gonna take our left hand and just tap our right shoulder back to the instrument, back to the right shoulder, and back to the violin again. You can practice this for five minutes a day. This is usually what you'll learn sort of in your very first violin lesson before we begin playing anything. If you can practice just that motion, even in front of the mirror for five minutes a day, you'll be set up very nicely for what we're going to be learning next in our violin career. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope to see you back here on concertini.com for our future lessons. Have a good one, guys.